go hard or go home. AMRAP stands for as many reps as possible. Therefore, you have to get in as many reps as humanly possible. I don't care if it goes to hell. I don't care if your form breaks down or you bust a tendon, get more reps. Pain is weakness leaving the body. That's how you get stronger. Bro, I can get like a hundred kipping pull-ups. What's your Murph time? Okay, enough poking fun at CrossFit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, CrossFit. Not sorry. In this video, I'm going to share with you one of my absolute in favorite ingredients to improve your strength right now today. This is one of the most underrated, underrated things that you can do for your strength training. It will help you correct form. It will help muscle engagement. It will get you stronger, faster, and it is tempo. Tempo and time under tension is what we're gonna talk about today. What we're gonna, what, how, what, what is it? <laughs> what is it? How to use it and why you should. Strike that, reverse it. Let's first talk about the benefits of applying this simple technique to your training. Why should you do it? Number one, injury prevention. I love preventing injuries. It makes training so much more fun when you're not injured all the time. So injury prevention is phenomenal. Better performance. Okay, so if you want to actually get stronger in the movements you're doing, if you have been struggling to like break a plateau to get past a certain area in your strength training, chances are that this is the secret missing ingredient that you've been missing. And we're going to be able to apply this to all of your body weight and strength training basics, uh, your squats, your pushups, your pull-ups, your deadlifts, your uh, shoulder presses, uh, time under tension and tempo training is one of those things that you can make as difficult or as easy as you like. And it's a great way to modify exercises. If you're in that weird in-between phase where you don't quite have heavy enough weight, uh, and you need to make it just a little bit more difficult, let's talk about, uh, uh, how to use it in your training. Um, so, or rather let's talk about what it is first. <laughs> The video, this, the order on this video is all messed up. That's okay. Hi. Hi. Okay. Uh, what is tempo? So it is the speed at which you go down the eccentric and the eccentric part of the movement, the down and up of the movement, wherever that happens to be, depending on the movement. Okay. In general, you're going to always want a slow down fast up. There are, there are exceptions to this rule. There are certain dynamic explosive activities that require you being explosive both directions. Uh, and, and those we will, we will address at another time. This time, this tempo, this time under tension, this can be applied, like I said, to all of your strength training basics. Uh, we're talking non-dynamic stuff, things like squats and deadlifts and lunges and um, push-ups and pull-ups and bicep curls and tricep extensions and shoulder press and chest press and bench press and all of those. Let's talk about uh, what to actually do to apply this to your training, because this is where it gets exciting and the rubber meets the road. So get ready to do some, some stuff with me right now. I'm going to switch my camera view and we're going to do it together. All right, I'm going to use a squat as our example. Now, assuming that you can do squats while uh, I'm talking here, warm up your legs a little bit, get them ready to work. Now, if you're doing a uh, an AMRAP, as many rep as many reps as possible. Let's say you're doing a five minute AMRAP of squats. You might be really tempted to do one of these: drop down, pop up, drop down, pop up. And while this will have certain benefits for cardiovascular capacity, for circulation, I'm not saying it's a waste of time that you did those super fast squats. It's it, you know it's a thing, but you're missing out. You're missing out on the descent, which is the part of the movement that gives us the best mus uh, physical muscular adaptations. So what we're gonna do for our tempo on this one is instead of just dropping down and using the elasticity, the spring to help us up, we're gonna slow it down a little bit and not a whole lot, just two seconds down. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, one. 
still explode on the way up. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, two. Aha, now we're getting somewhere. Now you can slow down this tempo even more depending on how difficult you wanna make it. Let's say you've been doing squats for a while and you don't have weights to put on your squats. Oh no, what's one to do? Let's go ahead and slow it down even further. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, and, ugh, and coming back up, exploding up. Same thing with push-ups. If you've been just kind of repping them out, try going down slow, pausing, and then coming up instead of just bouncing down and up. Because what happens when you're bouncing in and out of things really fast, you're actually using the elasticity of your tendon to sort of slingshot you, spring you back up again, which is not necessarily great for injury prevention, number one, and will not necessarily get you stronger or break that plateau. By slowing down on the way down, you will get more time under tension, which will lead to better physiological adaptations. When you're first getting started in your workout program, most of your strength gains aren't strength gains, strength gains. Most of your strength gains, your grains of string, are neurological, meaning the uh, brain muscle connection is reinforced, and you're able to get strong fairly quickly in your first six to twelve. 18 weeks of training, depending on what it is. But then you'll notice a massive slowdown if you're not really digging into that mind-body connection and improving on your form and your tempo or increasing the weight in some way. We want some kind of progressive overload, right? Progressive overload principle gradually increasing. And sometimes we wanna increase the weight. Sometimes we wanna increase the time under tension. Sometimes we need to back down out of the weight, get more reps in. This is true. All of these things are wonderful, but time under tension, I cannot tell you how much more you will get out of the simple, most basic exercises, everything from a bicep curl to a uh, tricep extension, to a squat, to a deadlift, all of these things, you in general want to go slow on the way down, fast on the way up. As the muscle is contracting and you get that nice sharp exhale, right? Sink that exhale and that con muscle contraction up with your breathing. But on the descent, go nice and slow. And you will get so much more out of your training, so much more out of your coaching. Um, so go ahead and pop in the comments below. Tell me what your experience is with your timing and your breathing. Is timing and breathing something that you pay attention to during your strength training? Um, the, the mindset we want to be in for strength training is very different than the mindset we want to be in for endurance training. For endurance training, and endurance is wonderful, I love me some endurance, you want to get in the mindset of like uh, sort of transcending your body and not really thinking about your body too much, just going, 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 pushing through the burn, pushing through the pain. When we mix this mindset with our strength training, however, we get really susceptible to injuries. For strength training, you really want to be present in the moment. You want to embrace the suck. You want to really like concentrate on what you're doing, what the form is, and work on breaking down that tempo a little bit. So if you are doing an AMRAP, and I do program AMRAPs for my students, AMRAPs are great, as many reps as possible, but put a cap on your tempo so that a perfect score, for example, on a 2-1 tempo would be 40 reps in two minutes. Okay, so there's only so many reps you can get in with perfect tempo, with perfect form. And we, if we start letting that degrade, not only are we reinforcing bad movement patterns and reinforcing neurological connections with poor movement patterns, we're not putting enough time under tension under the muscle to actually get beyond the point of stagnation, beyond that plateau. So try it out. Tell me what your thoughts are. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. If you would like more coaching with me or would just like to support the YouTube channel, you can go to www.thenerdgym.com. That will take you to our Patreon page. Go ahead and become a member if you're not already. You'll enjoy it. All right. I will talk to you next time. Bye. All did meet.
We are all haunted meat. Oh, I'm still recording. Okay. <laughs>